Fine, get ready to scream for ice cream. Um, we, got, we gotta do a tasting, okay. don't we? Okay. I mean, Let's start I'm here. here. We give you the scoop on Seattle's newest confection. Plus, Bachelor Nation welcomes a new addition. And then... We've talked to our kids about, you know, drugs and alcohol, friend stuff, even sex stuff, but we've never talked about money. Sound familiar? It's time to have the talk. We show you how to get it started. Seattle Refined starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Guard Swanson. It seems like every day here in the Emerald City, a new restaurant or shop is opening or closing. We try to cover them all, but every now and then, one really stands out, like the new ice cream shop creating a sensation on Capitol Hill and here in Ballard. Refine's Brandon Bernstead has the scoop on Salt and Straw. We started in Portland, Oregon. Uh, my cousin and I started just as a push cart, and that was all, that was our dream to open a push cart together. Salt and Straw started with a single cart, but it's become a growing scoop shop empire. The goal, make a positive impact in the community and showcase inventive ice cream. It's fun, it's delicious, but more than that, it's a beautiful platform to tell different stories from. After opening shops up and down the West Coast, Kim and Tyler Malik are finally bringing their farm to cone creations to Seattle in Ballard and Capitol Hill. It's a homecoming for Tyler, who grew up in Snohomish. He's Salt and Straw's head churn master, the flavor creator. This is the sea salt and caramel ribbons. You're speaking my language with this one. Yeah. This is the first flavor we ever created. It's my personal favorite. Uh, it's just a salted sweet cream, and then we hand burn caramel in our kitchen. We burn it really, really dark, so you should have like a ton of bitterness behind oh, the caramel. Yeah. Doing this for you, everyone. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's got yeah. that deep, dark, like yeah. really rich Thank caramel you. flavor. Everything in the ice cream is made by hand. The almond brittle in the almond brittle with salted ganache, that's grandma's recipe. And she's a discerning critic. She always complained that you didn't double that recipe, <laughs> did you? <laughs> but it's, it's up to grandma's yeah, standards. Yeah, I think so. Tyler is constantly tweaking recipes. That means he puts down about two pints of ice cream a day. The only flavor he's actually eating for personal enjoyment, Rachel's raspberry ginger beer. We took that soda and combined it with a little bit of coconut cream and put it in our ice cream machine. Wow. It's the easiest recipe ever. It's so yummy. Ginger beer, salted caramel, and almond brittle are part of Salt and Straw's classic menu, available year round. But there's also a special menu that changes every four weeks. For Tyler, it's a chance to play storyteller drawing inspiration from some of the city's top culinary creators. The food scene here is insane. Working with some of the different uh, coffee roasters, um, yeah. brewers, I think, like being able to tap into their secrets and learn from them. During our visit, the focus is on chocolate, Fran's Almond Gold Bar, Theo's Big Daddy S'mores, Fresco's Pure Chocolate Bar featuring chocolate specially created for salt and straw. The amount of time he cooks the cocoa beans, roasts them, the amount of time he uh, spends grinding them. All these flavors are phenomenal straight from the spoon, but for my money, they're best enjoyed in a fresh made waffle cone, and they do not skimp on the scoops. Tyler builds me a base, Alenos yogurt and matcha. Then he gives me a shot. This one's a little softer, so you should be, it should be a little safer for Oh yeah, this is pliable. Oh yeah, you can do that in one scoop. You got this, yeah. you got strength, man. Not too deep. Pull not up. Not too deep. You gotta we gotta pull, pull up. up. And then we gotta use the side. Oh. Yeah, and drag it up just a little bit. There you go, you got it. Beautiful. Oh, you could. Hey. This, hey, if I need a second job, I'm coming <laughs> to you. Strawberry with honey balsamic and black pepper. An old Italian trick to bring out the flavor of the berries. I can confirm. It tastes as good as it looks, even if it is a little bit messy. It is ridiculous, man. <laughs> you crushed it. Here's a, yeah. a little ice cream. No, in your beard. I got a little ice cream <laughs> in my beard. Oh no. <laughs> well, I mean, it was worth it, right? Yes, it definitely was. Salt and straw, unreal ice cream made with care and a whole lot of love. For Seattle Refined, I'm Brandon Bernstead. To learn more about Salt and Straw, log on to our website. And Salt and Straw isn't the only new kid on the block when it comes to ice cream. Cloud9 Creamery just opened its first shop in South Center Mall. Cloud9 specializes in liquid nitrogen ice cream. Nitrogen freezes ice cream super fast, which supposedly produces a creamier product. The whole process is a show unto itself. Don't believe me? Check out the gallery on our website. Moving on to one of our favorite topics. Of course, it's ABC's The Bachelor. And congrats to successful bachelor couple Evan Bass and Carly Waddell. They just welcomed their first child together, a girl named Isabella. 
A couple was married last summer in Mexico during ABC's Bachelor in Paradise. Congrats to the couple. Our favorite Bachelor success story is headed to Tacoma. Local gal Taylor Nolan and her fiance Derek Peth met on ABC's Bachelor in Paradise and got engaged shortly thereafter. Both Taylor and Derek will make appearances at the So Northwest Women's Show later this month. But Refine caught up with them to get the scoop on how reality transformed into romance. So first off, congratulations, you guys. Thank always you. Like, yeah. Always like to see a hometown girl have a me? success story. Yeah, yeah hometown, you hometown girl. girl. Will you marry me? <laughs> When's the wedding date, and are we going to see it on TV? <laughs> Derek? We've done so much, like, TV, TV, question, how is this, how is this? Like, so much in other people's timeline of our relationship that we're, like, trying to do some more romantic, like, and also bore more in real life. Yeah, and also do Before boring we stuff. Well. Like, we just want to sit on the couch and, like, watch TV together. You know, then I think we'd be open-minded to it being on TV because so many people, like, are invested in, in the relationship and all that, but... We don't want it to be our decision. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't like each other at first. Yeah. <laughs> I, I started it in the dumbest way possible. The basically. worst way. <laughs> Tell us. I walked up to her and I said, What's up, kiddo? <laughs> but it was, it was more like his tone. He's like, what's up, kiddo? And I was like, no, yeah. turn around. No way. <laughs> so when was the moment that you knew this could be love? There was, what was the a defining moment where you were like, this is it? I have my moment. <laughs> Share your moment, I know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't eat on the date, right? So then on the way back, we're like shoveling all this not so great food yeah. in our mouth. Yeah. And like, I was a little gassy that night. And we were both where we were like, do we want to do Boom Boom tonight? Yeah, like... which is what they call the room where you like, you can sleep together. And I'm like, I, and I, you know, I had to let one a little bit, but she, and she noticed it. She was like aware of it and she goes, Oh, is your stomach okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. She goes, don't hold that in. I don't want your stomach to hurt. <laughs> I was like, you can let it out. Yeah. It's okay. And that's when you knew you had a good woman on your yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't have to walk on eggshells. I could yeah. just be myself. Where are you at? I'm right next to you. I want to stay next to you. How do you guys forget the cameras and drop your guard and actually like fall in love? You have to kind of let your guard down and really surrender that thought of having any control. Taylor, we have you from our Bachelor casting call two years ago. We actually have you on camera being asked by our host guard, you know, do you really think you can find love on The Bachelor? And your was a very hesitant react, uh, reaction. <laughs> I'm shocked you have that footage. Do you really think you could fall in love with somebody on a show? You could. Are you shocked that, that where you're where you're at now when you first went to that casting call and to do this? I mean, are you shocked where you're at right now? Absolutely. I. It feels not real a lot of the time. Yeah, I'm like, wait, I met you on a show. Right. It's like I met you on a reality TV show. Excuse me. <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense most days, but I'm happy. Where are you guys gonna end up living? He's gonna be in New York. So we're not with gonna me like immediately. rush to moving it's in not, with each other yet. Yep. We're gonna like but date definitely each other like. A little bit back and forth, come and stay with me for, mm -hmm. you know, a week or two, you yeah. know. Both Derek and Taylor are scheduled to appear and meet fans at the So Northwest Women's Show this weekend in Tacoma. To learn more or buy tickets, log on to nwwomenshow.com. Shadow Refined is just getting started. A heartbreaking discovery in the trash. I think it was a, uh, a wife sending these love letters to her, to her uh, husband. A Northwest woman quest to make sure her discovery ends up in the right hand. But first, a toast to a family pub doing it upright. Cheers, my friends. Oh yeah, that's good. We'll whip up a scotch egg to go with some scotch brew next. Welcome back to the show, I'm Guard Swanson. You know, one of my favorite places to grab a quick meal is a pub, but not all pub fare is created equal. Washington Grown's Christy Gorenson discovered a pub that's always packed and why there's a good reason why. We're stopping by Poole's Public House in Spokane. This pub provides the perfect blend of tradition, food, and of course, beverages. They've got cocktails if you want them. They have a good beer selection. They've got a really good wine list. Wide selection of alcohol, whiskeys especially, great food, and great staff. The pub is owned and operated by the Poole family, a tight-knit group that treats every customer like family. It feels like family. It feels like they pay attention to what you want. 
wonderful food and great people. Owner Scott Poole had always dreamt of creating a place where families and friends could gather to eat, drink, and watch their favorite sports games. We're kind of a traditional pub atmosphere, mm -hmm. but we've, we've in, in America, we've thrown the TVs in because people like watching their sporting events. Yeah. So I, I classify this as a kind of upscale sports pub. One thing that keeps their loyal customers coming back is Poole's wide selection of brews. Our biggest selling item is beer. Mm -hmm. We always uh, have local rotators. We have our own brew that we that we brew okay. uh, with the help of Waddell's Brewery, and that was fun to come up with Scotch Ale. Uh -huh. uh, and you'll get to sample that as well. well. I'm here with Jace, the head chef at Poole's Public House, and we're going to make Scotch eggs. Yes, right? yes, we so are. What is that exactly? Scotch egg. It's a hard boiled egg. Okay, hard boiled um, eggs. And usually it's a Scottish uh, sausage that they wrap around mm -hmm. it, but we're using Italian sausage and just bread it and then deep fry them and deep fry. Yeah, and then we use okay. it pair it with our local beer that we have. So awesome. yes, okay. Super safety easy first. process. Yes, safety first. So go ahead and grab your egg here. Okay. These are hard boiled. These are already hard boiled. Yeah, we pre boiled those already. And what we'll do here is we'll dip it in the flour. Make a mess, it's not that big of a deal. Right. Okay, exactly. and I'll do the same. Good. And then what we'll do is, our, I already, uh, we got this Italian sausage mm -hmm. locally from Angus Meats. Awesome. Um, and what we do is just flatten it out, put it right in the middle here. In the middle. And then just kind of roll it. So this is a hands-on. This definitely hands-on process. It's just, we're gonna enclose the egg with the sausage. Just stretch that sausage around it. Next, we dip our eggs back into the flour and then into an egg wash. <laughs> there we go. That's why we're using our gloves. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> Woo, okay. They didn't have to fill them up. And then we'll put them in the Italian. We just add Italian seasoning to the breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. And then this what is you do. Great. If you like to play with your yeah. food, this is the perfect thing. And then just kind of kind of pack, like, kind of pack it around there a little okay. bit. Okay. After they've cooled, we put our eggs into the deep fryer until they are golden brown. Then they're ready for the plate. Nice golden brown. Wow. There we go. We pour some of Jace's finished gravy for dipping and then top it all off with some garnish. Yeah, and look at what I also have. Oh, our local pool's beer. Oh, yeah. it's pretty thick. So Thank is you. this supposed to go really this well is, with this? Yes, it? Yes, it does. Actually, it's very well. we got to get it tasted. Oh, yeah. That's good. Good stuff. Time to finally slice our egg open and give it a try. Oh, I'm excited. Give you a shot. This is hearty, yeah. right here. Cheers. That is so good. Uh, Never had anything like this. Yes. So super crunchy and salty on the outside. And it pairs well with the little gravy and it does. Uh, a local the... beer. Yeah. Cheers, my friends. Yes. Thank that you was so much. Really awesome. Thanks for having me. Look for more stories like that from our friends at Washington Grown every week here on Refine. Coming up, a shocking discovery in an apartment dumpster and why now is the time to have the big talk with your kids about money. Welcome back to Refine, I'm Gard Swanson. There are a few subjects in life that make people more uncomfortable than talking about money. I've had people tell me they'd rather talk about sex with their children than their finances. But thanks to our sponsor, BECU, having the big talk doesn't need to be a big deal. Here's Refine's Malia Karlinski. Hey, it's me, Malia, part of the Seattle Refine family. And today I'm bringing my family members in, my teenagers, to BECU to learn all about money. We couldn't wait to meet Stacy Black. She's a financial educator. Hey, Stacy. I'm Malia. Hi. Hi. These are my kids. This is Mia. She's 12. Hi, Hi Mia. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. This is Max. He's 15. Hi, Max. Nice, nice to, meet, nice to you. meet you. Welcome to BECU. We're a not-for-profit financial institution, and one of our goals is to help our members with their finances. So let's start with you, Malia. What's um, the last major purchase you made? The last major purchase I made was a um, new Honda Pilot. So what was the process you went through? We shopped around. We looked at a number of different dealerships. Mm -hmm. um, we finally found one that we loved, and um, then we financed it with a mix of um, money that we had saved and a loan from BECU. Oh, nice. So, so Malia, have you ever talked to these guys about money? Stacy, I'm so <laughs> embarrassed. I was thinking about that. We've talked to our kids about, you know, drugs and alcohol, friend stuff, even sex stuff, but we've never talked about money. Here's the perfect place to start. 
BECU's Principal Pamphlet, The Next Big Talk, is a great guide for parents to use to get the conversation started. That's one of the reasons we came out with the next big talk, because most parents don't know how to talk to their kids about money. So what's a good way to approach that? Do you guys want to take a minute and write down everything you purchased in the last week? What we learned, Mia's purchases tended to be pricier. Mia, what did you buy? Um, I got my nails done. <laughs> of I course. went shopping <laughs> with my friends. I got movie tickets, I got makeup, and I got shoes. Oh, nice. Okay, and how about you, Max? Well, I got uh, chips, video games, movie tickets, um, movie rentals, and clothes. Oh, okay, so my question to you then is, do you guys know the difference between a want and a need? It was time for the kids to learn an important lesson. A want is something that you don't necessarily need to survive. <laughs> a need is something that you absolutely require, like something that you must have. Why don't you go through your list and put a little star next to the things that are needs? What did you put a star next to? Shoes. And Max, you starred chips. Well, yeah, <laughs> food in general is something I need to survive, but maybe not chips. Yeah, right, right. So we get confused. As adults, we get confused as well. Um, so we need reminders as well. And I think it's important to start early on and talk to our kids about wants versus needs and remind them. My next question would be, did you save anything? Yeah. You did save. Good. Do you guys automatically save part of your allowance every week? Try to. So that would be my advice. First thing is pay yourself first. Do you know what that means? Save. That's the most important thing you can do for your financial self is to save. What percentage of my allowance should I be saving? We always suggest that you save between 10 to 25 percent and at least 10 percent. Max, why don't you tell us about how much you've saved and what you're saving for? Well, in my um, bank right now, I have about 6000 just for like a car. And mine's like four to five thousand. Mm -hmm. Good job. So what are you saving for? Uh, I'm saving for college. Nice. We know that if we start talking to our kids at an early age about finances, they'll be better off in the future financially. <laughs> Thanks to Stacy and BECU, my family learned how much money matters, well, matter. Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refined. To download your copy of BECU's The Money Talk, log on to our website or grab a copy in person at BECU's booth at the upcoming Northwest Women's Show. For tickets, log on to nwwomenshow.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> Headed to the So Northwest Women Show? How about taking the time to help others? Bloodworks Northwest has teamed up with Jean Juarez Salons to offer a blood donation experience like none other. Once you donate, Jean Juarez Salon will pamper you with your choice of an express manicure or blowout. And if you pre-book a donation appointment during the 9 a.m. hour Saturday or 10 a.m. hour Sunday, you will receive a $50 Gene Juarez gift certificate. Visit the website on your screen to register. Welcome back to Refine, I'm Guard Swanson. You know, they say one man's trash is another person's treasure, but what a Northwest woman found in the dumpster of her apartment building is even more valuable than gold. You could tell she loved him because it's tons and tons and tons of letters to him. A lifetime of memories. Uh, there's Iowa, uh, Michigan, Ohio, Pittsburgh. Yeah, he's been he's been quite a few places. Some more than a century old. This right here is so cute. June 2nd, 1913. Yeah, see, this stuff is old. Look at the paper. Nancy Adams couldn't believe what she found in her building's garbage room. I think it was a, uh, a wife sending these love letters to, to her uh, husband. That husband? John Butler, a career officer in the Air Force, keeping loving correspondence from all over the world with his wife Margie and their children. I want to type again, goodbye daddy. Aww. Now Nancy, who also served in the military, is determined to send these letters on one last journey, now that they found their way to her. God works in mysterious ways. Yes. Said that? Let's see. Nancy will find it. She's been in the military. She'll be the person to try to get it returned back to the loved ones. That's the way I look at it. And there's good news. Turns out, Nancy got a hold of one of John and Margie's children in Maryland who planned to travel west and retrieve her parents' love letters. John and Margie are both buried at Arlington National Cemetery. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. I'm Guard Swanson. Thanks for joining us right here on Seattle Refined. We'll see you next time. <laughs>